Hey, what is going on, SMT Nation? It is your boy, the SMT. We are doing some CBRS testing today. Band 48, 3.5 gigahertz, a big piece of what I feel Verizon is going to be emphasizing in 2021. There is a large portion of this particular band that is going to be allocated for licensed access. So Verizon has 30 or 40 megahertz and many of the you know, larger markets across the country. We'll see a lot of that deployed in many different scenarios. They've already said that you'll see it in mixed use applications, situations like indoor, outdoor. You'll see it on micro cells. You'll see it on macro sites as well. So clearly they feel very strongly that it's going to be something that'll offer a lot of capacity and boosting to the network. So I'm actually driving over. This was from a Patreon exclusive live stream. I'm headed over to the site to test it. It's not too far from where I live. So it really didn't take much for me to go over there and test it. And uh, it is a small cell in application. So this is the um, unlicensed variation of CBRS, and that is uh, general access, which means any carrier can use it. It's it's unlicensed. So the licensed version, which we'll probably see starting to get deployed, you know, in the midpoint of next year, we'll see Verizon doing a lot of work with that. And then we'll also see T-Mobile using it as well. I know they didn't get as much of it, and it won't be a big piece of what they do. They're going to focus, obviously, mostly on 2.5 gigahertz. But again, when it's unlicensed, any carrier can utilize it. And then with Verizon possibly also going to combine the, you know, the, the licensed version, aggregating it with the unlicensed version seems like a great way for them to add capacity. So I wanted to show you what kind of expectations you could have when you access band 48. Again, I think a big piece of what Verizon is doing moving forward and then also what some other carriers can utilize in the unlicensed way. And uh, honestly, in the testing, you know, I looked at the micro cell. I'm going to show you guys pictures and stills of how they kind of strategically place these things and what you can expect, you know, when you start to see them coming up maybe in your city, whether it's rural or in urban settings. So this is a suburb of the CLE. You'll see that it's located around a bunch of plazas strategically placed here to provide capacity. I would guess that Verizon really struggles here with, you know, at certain times where it's a lot of congestion on the network. Now, CBRS is completely LTE. This is not 5G. And, you know, looking at it, it just it looks like a small cell, uh, just kind of like a pole sticking up in the middle of nowhere. And um, the antennas are inside that little bucket thing. And uh, take a look at some of the hardware here at the bottom. You'll see that there's meters. You'll see the, the cables and the fiber. It's all run up there. Uh, I, to notice the other connections there, I, I mean, this is all mid-band. I did not connect to any low band. You could see the location. It's a shopping plaza. There's one across the street. There's one to the side. There's residences. There's a reason why they want to alleviate the congestion here. So I'm going to show you guys some speed tests. We're going to take a look at some of the numbers we get from the test. There's the first preliminary test I got as I was approaching the site from, I, I'd say, about 1,500 feet away or so. Uh, and I was moving towards it. So that's pretty good. And that's promising. You'll see it's 20 megahertz by three. So that's 60 megahertz of CBRS. And then it's 20 megahertz of band two and 20 megahertz of band 66. And uh, it's it, it's a pretty good performer. If you look at the speeds, that's pretty nice. Uh, you can see I'm right up against the site. So the DBM is very low, indicating that my signal strength is very strong. So I run a couple of tests here and, you know, sorry if this is a little fast for you, but I didn't want this video to be too long. So I put it in 2x to make sure that, you know, I don't, you know, keep you guys for, you know, more than I have to. So 244 megabits per second on the down, 42 megabits per second on the up, low 30s for the latency and 4 millisecond on the, uh, on the jitter. So what I wanted to do is I wanted to actually test it from some range. Uh, you know, I'm not sure about the antennas and the directional nature of them. So I wanted to go across the street to the neighborhood side and kind of park on the side of the street and see if I could pick it up. Uh, it's, it's obviously very easy to pick up a small cell when you're close to it, but obviously with space and range, probably, you know, weaken the signal. So I'm, I'm about, I don't know, I'd say about a thousand feet or so, maybe like 800 feet. Uh, so I'm over a block away and I'm kind of tucked away behind those trees. I wanted to see if I connect and to my dismay, it did not connect. I was not able to get the CBRS. So I've been able to identify one of the weaknesses of CBRS and its current iteration is it's not high power. And because it's not high powered, the transmission and the range is limited. So if you are in a place where they're deploying CBRS until it goes high power, if it does, it's going to have limitations in its spread and its range. 
So I'm, in my opinion, I'm really not that far and I'm not really sure about the directional nature of the antenna placement. I wish I could just <laughs> slice open one of those cans and take a look to see where the antennas are facing, but clearly it was not reaching here. You'll see the tests are very pedestrian, 66 megabits per second. That's not bad, but that's definitely not CBRS material. It's not showing the bandwidth. So not reaching across the street kind of diagonal. So the street where you see all the traffic, those cars are moving uh, east and west. So I was kind of north of the site and it, it just didn't reach. So I'm thinking that possibly it's a directional thing. I think that if you look at the traffic of the street and the directions it was going, I think that's where the antennas are pointed and that's where we'll get connected to the CBRS. So to confirm this, I moved and I actually pulled out of the that section of the, of the street and I went back into the parking lot, but I went a little bit further away. So I'm probably about five or 600 feet away and I did indeed connect, which is good. Um, that's exactly what I wanted to see. I wanted to confirm. But it looks like possibly maybe it's just like very situational where they're putting maybe like two sectors in there. They're like pointing at east and west. And that's why, you know, we're getting CBRS in that way. And we're not getting it kind of like on the north side. All right. So where the street was, so you'll see 292 down, 40 megabits per second on the up. So again this is a cleveland area suburb i'm i'm actually kind of surprised they didn't force the issue and point it over towards those homes but they're definitely pointing it towards these plazas where these stores are and where i'm assuming a lot of the congestion can be relieved because people are in those locations so they're kind of strategically placing it there so they can try to get people connected to the cbrs as much as possible and uh you know deal with that congestion and um you know, honestly, I, I wanted to continue. I created a little bit more distance. I wanted to test to see if it worked from a little further. So now I'm about a thousand feet away. Uh, you can kind of see the small cell there in the background and, and it connected. Uh, there's the speed test before, uh, from before. I'm going to go ahead and do another test and see if it connects and see if I can still get some fast data speeds. We'll see if maybe the range is limited there, but I could tell you I did connect and the speeds were pretty good. Uh, although they were inconsistent at like 12 or 1300 feet it was kind of touch and go uh, it did connect pretty well from about a thousand feet so although it is low power and although it does have its range limitation it is an effective uh, connection and it is very fast and i think like i said this is going to be a big piece of what verizon does you know moving forward next year until they really get the opportunity to really push the c-band which we know you know looking at spectrum auction 107 they're going to be heavily involved there so I wanted to share this with you guys. I wanted to show you um, how it performs as CBRS makes itself to your market. Here's what you can expect from the range and the speeds and the reliability and the performance. So let me know what you have to say on this testing. Let me know if you like what you see. Um, you know, tell me what you think of CBRS. I'd love to hear what you have to say. The voice of the people. Thank you for taking this opportunity to watch the SMT YouTube channel. If you appreciated this video, give it a like and a share to all your favorite social media platforms. Thank you in advance for that. Also, check out some of the links in the description box. We have the SMT Patreon page. We also have the Twitter handle at Sneed Tech. And do check out the audio-only podcast available on all the major podcast platforms. And if you are new and have yet have not subscribed, go ahead and hit that subscribe button and activate the bell notification icon so you never miss an upload from the SMT. We'll catch you on the next video. Peace.